Sharp-tailed grouse and rough grouse numbers are up in North Dakota. Season starts September 12th. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. My guest this week is Upland Game Supervisor Jesse Kohler. Jesse, tell our viewers first, how are your surveys conducted? Well, we do different surveys for, for each upland game species and sharp tail. All of our grouse species are unique because they display at the same spots each year. So we can go out and we can do a, a census on their, on their dancing grounds, which are called leks. And we go out to the same township sized blocks, roughly township sized block, and we locate all those traditional grounds each year and see how many males are present at those dancing grounds. Okay, and rough grouse a little different. Rough grouse, we do a, a survey just like, a route survey just like for pheasants. You can hear them, they sit on a log and they'll drum with their wings, they'll make a, a pounding sound. So you can drive through the Turtle Mountains or the Pemino Hills where we have rough grouse and you stop at every stop for four minutes and record how many you hear. What did the numbers look like compared to 2019? Yes, yeah, so our spring index is the best for our population trends. Currently we're, we're also doing a reproductive surveys and we call those our brood surveys or our late summer roadside counts. But those aren't as good for sharp-tailed grouse for density just because we, we count a really low number of grouse on a lot of miles. So we're comparing 0.001 to 0.002. Um, so it's tough to, tough to compare those. So the spring numbers of our males, how many that made it through last season and started our year, we were up about 22% statewide, and that ranged from 16% in the southwest, you know, mid-30s in the, along the Little Missouri, or along the Missouri River, um, to 9%, a little bit less in the eastern part of the state. Okay, and rough grouse numbers are up as well. And rough grouse numbers were up slightly in the Turtle Mountains, and they were up quite a bit in the Pemina Hills. Rough grouse are primarily found in the Turtle Mountains and the Pemina Hills. Um, Sharp-tailed grouse, there are certain areas in the state where you cannot hunt sharp-tailed grouse. Yep, exactly. So they're found statewide. However, we don't have a hunting season currently in two areas, one by Grand Forks and then one in the southeast corner by the Cheyenne National Grasslands. And there are two blocks. You can see the, see the map and the hunting guide. Um, but those two areas were closed to protect incidental take of greater prairie chickens, which have been declining in North Dakota. So we've, we've had discussions on whether or not to open those back up, but right now the thought are that is that we don't want any additional harvest on prairie chickens because their numbers have been declining. Okay, and we should mention there is no prairie chicken season or sage grouse season. Yeah, both prairie chicken and sage grouse seasons will remain closed this year and, and probably for the indefinite future. Jesse, how are partridge numbers, Hungarian partridge in North Dakota? Our partridge numbers, just like every year we tell people, I'd never, I'd never go out partridge hunting specifically. You'd probably hunt your whole day without seeing a partridge. However, I think most upland hunters who are out this fall should end up seeing a partridge during their hunting season, should see several. Um, I've had routes where I've counted more partridge than pheasant this year, which is really abnormal for the southwest part of the state and across, across most of the state we've been seeing larger broods and, and more partridge per, per 100 miles of our surveys. So it, it looks good for partridge. Okay, there is one thing hunters can do this fall and that is uh, wing envelope surveys. Yeah, we appreciate any hunters who, who do harvest upland birds. Um, all, all of our upland birds, we appreciate uh, samples of wings. We have envelopes that show exactly which feathers we need and, and what we use them for, but we use the feathers to assess the reproduction of the year. So we look at not only how many juveniles per adult the hunters are harvesting, but also the age of those juveniles, so which week they hatched in. And that helps us to understand how things like weather and um, the progression of crops, the progression of grassland, and, and the previous year's weather might affect hatch. And we can look back at that and try to, try to correlate um, weather factors, climate factors, and habitat factors with hatch, and then we can predict that better in the future so that hunters will have a better idea of what's coming before, before our fall surveys are, are finished. Okay, how, if a hunter wants to participate, how, what, what do they need to do? Uh, all a hunter would have to do is go online. There, you can find the envelope requests on there. Some hunters who've sent in envelopes before will be getting those in the mail, and other hunters can go online and request them. A large manila envelope, and like I said, the instructions are on there, so pretty easy to fill them out, clip a wing off, and send them in. Parts of the state are really dry. 
what do hunters need to do if they're heading out this fall? Yeah, specifically, specifically parts in the southwest, but across the state we can have dry portions and wet portions. So when you're traveling, uh, make sure not to just look at fire information from your local county, but wherever you intend to go hunting at. Even in the backup counties, if you go to one spot and don't find anything and end up moving, make sure you study ahead and know what the fire index is. Um, individual counties might have regulations also on camping or open burning for campfires, so make sure to know all the regulations on, on the counties. The, the Game and Fish doesn't regulate the fires, but the, the counties regulate what you can do as far as fires. Um, and that's usually, it usually follows the fire index for each county. So hunters should see birds this fall? Yeah, hunting for grouse is going to be better than what it was the last three years. It's not, not going to be back to what it was in 2012 to 14, but I think we'll have numbers similar to, to what we had in 2015. Um, 16 right before the declines of the drought. And our numbers right now are about right in the middle of our 10-year average. So that 10-year average includes our lows from 2017-18 and the highs just before that. Um, so it's going to be a really average year, which, which should be a, a welcome for most hunters who experience the lows the last two to three years. A lot of good information. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. For more information on the grouse and partridge seasons, visit the Game and Fish Department website at gf.nd. Gov. For Upland Game Supervisor Jesse Kohler and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this year's Grouse and Partridge Season Preview. We'll see you again next week.